Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mythic Plus Dungeon Guides for every single dungeon in Season 4, including every important boss and trash mechanic. A lot of effort went into creating this with footage from the PTR, so if you like it, press the button below, leave a comment and share it with your friends. You can also check the separate dungeon guides and boss guides on my YouTube channel. And now, without further ado, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ruby Life Post Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Season 4. Footage is from the PTR, subject to change, but I assume it's gonna be pretty close to what it's going to go to the live servers. Beware of the Juggernauts, because they're going to cast Excavating Blast Big Circle on the ground, which is going to one-shot you, and it could be hard to see if you pull them in the first room in the water. Save a stun, knock-up or any other CC for the tectonic slam of the Earth Shapers as if it goes off it does a lot of AoE damage and it's not interruptible. And all the interrupts should go to the two weavers which are going to cast Ice Shield, just an absorb that is going to slow you down killing them and they're also going to be casting Ice Bolts that you can send any spare interrupts at. Few packs of those and you're gonna end up fighting a mini boss which is going to put Swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge and he's gonna follow them up with a charge that you also need to dodge. Keep in mind that he does a lot of damage to the tank on fortified weeks especially so be prepared to heal the tank while on the move dodging the Swirlies. The first boss is Meldrusa, she's going to summon Ice Bombs at the feet of everybody in your party. Try to stack those and keep them close together as you have to dodge them later. As her next ability is called Chill Storm, she marks a player in your party. They have 3 seconds to drop a circle that then starts to suck everybody in. Run out of it as quickly as possible and keep in mind that you'll be taking ticking damage while the circle is active with a big chunk of AoE after it ends and explodes. At 75 and 45% she summons a bunch of orbs that you have to AoE down. They also put a stacking debuff on your tank, make sure to dispel it before it reaches 8 stacks or the tank gets frozen. And the boss also puts a huge shield on herself, you have to DPS it down to interrupt her as she's doing heavy AoE damage to everybody in your team. The rest of the time she's gonna keep juggling between the hell bombs and the chill storm. After you kill the boss you fly up and you start going in a circle, there's too many bosses on each side. If you go left you're going to fight Thunderhead. He's gonna put two debuffs on players that do a lot of damage on expiration or dispelling so try to dispel one, heal up everybody and then let the second one expire to heal up once more. And the boss also has a storm breath which is a frontal that you need to dodge. You usually skip the other mini boss flame Gullet but if you pull it it also has a frontal and once it goes below 50% it starts doing increased stacking AoE damage so you have to burst it down as quickly as possible before it kills you. Going around the circle you have to kill 4 big fire elemental destroyers in order to summon the boss. They'll keep casting inferno which does AoE damage and leaves a dot on everybody in your team. That's plenty of healing to do and they're also going to mark a person with a living bomb, big circle around you. It does a bunch of damage and it knocks everybody inside up after it expires including hostile mobs. So if you get it you actually want to drop it on top of the enemies to knock them up as there's plenty of interrupting to do, preferably with or without hitting your melee and that entirely depends on your group. Now you want to be knocking mobs up because of the flame dancers who are going to cast flame dance. CCable but uninterruptible channel that ends up with a huge AoE, if you combine that with the infernos it could easily become overwhelming and once you kill those mobs they become immune for 8 seconds and they start spawning fire swirlies around you. They also do AoE damage in close proximity so you either have to burst to their blaze of glory shield or you can just purge it which is highly recommended. And at the same time you should interrupt as many cinder bolts as you can from the cinder weavers. Which by the way you can also knock up with the living bomb. The next boss is Kokia Blazehoof, she's always going to start with spawning one of the destroyers that we saw earlier in a big fiery circle that you need to dodge. Once the elemental is summoned you have to jump on it and kill it as quickly as possible as it's going to cast the well familiar inferno doing AoE damage. And at the same time you should be interrupting its roaring blaze because if it goes off it does even more AoE damage. At the same time the boss is smacking your tank with searing blows which do a lot of damage so be prepared to heal them. And once you kill the elemental it explodes into a big fire bomb and it leaves a patch on the ground that you cannot go back to. 
Shortly after, she's going to summon another Elemental, and the Elemental always spawns on one of the players, so you can bait its position. And the other thing that you should be baiting are the boulders that she throws at people, rolling stones, that keep going until they hit something, and they leave a permanent fire trail behind them, so make sure not only to dodge them, but also to bait them to the direction that you came from, so you have plenty of space to juggle with the Elementals and the boss. She always starts with summoning an elemental and then throws two boulders before she summons the next elemental. So be aware of your positioning and keep in mind that you're constantly baiting something. And if your baits are not good, you can end up locking yourself in the middle of a fire field. The trash that follows has a bunch of storm warriors that do thunderclap, small AoE area in melee, so stay out of that if you can and small shielded elementals that are going to charge an area with a small blue swirly and explode on impact. The lightning storm that you see right now is casted by the Tempest channelers and it's not interruptible so be prepared to use defensives and heal through that and there will also be casting thunderbolts, interrupt as many of these as you can. The next packs also have flame channelers which have a must interrupt flash fire ability, not only does a huge ticking damage to the player but it also heals the caster so you definitely don't want it to go off. Before the last boss you also have to kill a mini boss that's going to cast shock blast interrupt all of these as they do not only damage but also leave a dot at the player and you're also going to see the well familiar lightning storm which is an AoE that you have to heal through. The mini boss is also going to keep summoning the small shielded elementals and if you don't burst or purge their shields at some point he absorbs them for himself and if you fail to drip yes to his shield he does a lot of AoE damage at the end. The last boss starts in phase 1 where you fight Kuraka the big dragon and Erkhart separately. Throughout the whole fight Erkhart is going to cast Cloudburst which does AoE damage and silences you if you're casting so make sure you keep an eye on that and he's also going to storm slam your tank which does a bunch of damage and leaves a debuff on your tank increasing the damage they take for 30 seconds so make sure you keep dispelling that. He'll also keep summoning winds that try to blow everybody off the platform, changing direction every time. So be aware of that and keep an eye on the dragon because he's gonna jump down and do a frontal fire breath that you need to dodge. Shortly after he puts Inferno Core debuff on a player which does a lot of ticking damage and on expiration drops fire patches on the ground. Keep in mind that these fire patches are affected by the winds that Erkhart summons so you have to keep dodging them while the winds are active and you can also blow them off a platform. Phase 2 starts as soon as one of them reaches 50% then Erkhart mounts the dragon and now his new flame speed ability is going to put the inferno core debuff on 3 people instead of just 1. So use all of your defensives and healing cooldowns here trying to burst the dragon down as quickly as possible as the flame spits will keep happening in between each of the frontals of the dragon and don't forget that Erkhart is still there and he will be casting the cloud burst which will do additional AoE damage and silence you if you're not careful. After you kill the dragon Erkhart is pretty easy on his own and also keep an eye on my channel as I'll be making a separate video for this boss not only explaining the mechanics in a little bit more depth but also I'll provide some weak auras that will help you track the cloud burst so you don't get silenced and the positions where you want to drop the inferno core puddles so the follow up winds actually blow them off the platform and not drag them in the middle of it. Ladies and gentlemen welcome to the Udeman Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Season 4 PTR footage so some changes are possible before this goes live. At the start you're gonna see some Geomancers interrupt their spikes as much as you can but always save an interrupt for their chain lightning which does a lot of AoE damage. The Basilic Spite Carapace puts a dot on your tank which stacks so interrupt those as well and make sure to stay out of the AoE stomp of the Berserkers big brown swirly on the ground. The first boss is a trio of lost dwarfs. Eric is going to throw daggers doing single target damage to players and cast Skullcracker. Brown Swirly on the ground that you need to dodge. Olaf is going to throw his shield at you which does damage and ricochets to nearby players so stay away from them. He also casts a dome which reduces the damage taken while the dwarfs are standing inside, simply interrupt that channel. And Belloc has a frontal and a cleave so make sure you always stand in behind him. At some point the dwarves jump in their boat and they start doing AoE damage, shooting fire swirlies on the ground that leave fire puddles. 
So keep dodging these and keep in mind that in some variations on the PTR the AoE damage was quite significant and this might be the case when this goes live on the servers as well. Once the dwarf get off of the bolt the fight continues as before. The trash packs that follow introduce some new mobs but the only new ability is the throw rock just really on the ground that you need to dodge and you will arrive at the second boss. Bromac is going to go for adds one of them is range you need to interrupt it so it goes on top of the boss and you can cleave it down. The other three adds are ambushers they're gonna jump on players and do single target damage. He also does thundering slam big blue circle don't stay inside. And for his main ability he summons a totem that starts doing pulsing damage to everybody in your party. So you wanna focus it and kill it as quickly as possible. Once that happens all the mobs around the totem get stunned including the boss and they take increased damage. So make sure to drag them on top keep interrupting the geomancers and after that everything continues in the same sequence of abilities. After the boss you get to fight some custodians the earthen ones cleave so stay behind them if the refty ones have a jagged bite. That's a stacking bleed on your tank could get pretty nasty if you do not stun them as that ability is not interruptible. And they also keep getting enraging stacks doing more and more damage which continues until you stun them. They're also quite slow so there are some strats where you can just pull them on top of the next boss. The launder starts with two orbs or two stacks of above that prevent him from getting stunned. He also marks players that drop circles underground moving the boss through those circles removes one of these stacks. You have to manage to do that and then drag him through a orb for a third time before he manages to cast titanic empowerment which is basically enrage and the boss starts doing more damage. Keep in mind that every time you stun the boss he gets a stacking buff that increases the damage that his other abilities do. So try to time the stuns with the titanic empowerment cast and keep in mind that regular stun abilities also work on the boss. Other than that the boss is gonna keep casting crushing stomp huge AOE ability that knocks everybody back. And he also leaves 10 second bleeds on random players throughout the fight. You have to make sure to heal them back up to full before the crushing stomps so that they don't get one shotted by them. Obviously the later stages of the fight are gonna be harder because the boss is going to be doing more damage so saving bloodlust for them is advisable. The trash that follows includes some weavers which are going to cast hail of stone. Uninterruptible channel that you need to CC because it does huge AOE damage to everybody in your party. And they'll also cast stone bolts save any spare interrupts for those. The priority interrupt here is curse of stone casted by the wardens. If that goes off and you cannot dispel it the target becomes a stone they get stunned and after a short while they explode in a big brown swirly. So make sure to interrupt that and also spare interrupt should go to the Erden Ward which is just a shield placed on a friendly target. There's a pack with runic protector coordinated groups try to avoid this mob as it's quite nasty. Fissuring slam hits several players and leaves puddles on the ground that you need to move out from and then he's going to cast earthquake. 6 seconds channel that does heavy AOE damage to everybody on your party it's not avoidable so you simply have to heal through it. What follows is an area with a bunch of spiders that are going to pounce on people and do damage leaving stacking poison on your tank. Having a poison dispel here really helps. And while you fight them you have to interrupt the bats around them the sonic burst if it goes off you take heavy AOE damage and you get silenced. Killing them opens the door to boss number 4 Emberon who has a huge frontal so don't stay in front. His first AoE ability is called unstable embers, fire circles are spawned around each of the players, make sure you don't overlap those as they explode for a lot of damage shortly. And keep in mind that the adds near the wall are going to keep sending those fire pillars at players so you need to keep moving and dodging them throughout the fight. At some point the boss also casts searing clap which leaves fire debuff dot on every player. This one is dispellable but of course the ones that you cannot dispel you have to heal through. Every 40 seconds the boss jumps into the middle of the room becomes immune and spawns fire beams that start rotating around the room so make sure you don't get hit by those. In order to transition him back to phase 1 you have to kill 4 adds around the room that are channeling towards the boss. And you have to do that while moving in front of the beams it's highly advisable here to stack on your tank before this phase starts so everybody's group and the healer can keep you up as everybody is taking taking damage throughout that phase. 
The boss will keep juggling between those two phases until it dies. The trash that follows introduces several new mobs, the first one is the Ebonstone Golem. It has a 3 second thunderous clap cast that does heavy AoE damage to everybody inside but you can avoid that damage by hiding behind some of the pillars in the area. The earthen guardians are going to cast a dome that does damage to everybody inside and buffs the damage of the unfriendly mobs that remain there so make sure you move everybody outside of it. And just before the last boss you're gonna fight some infinite agents, interrupt their Hassan ability as it buffs their damage and you can drag them on top of the infinite time reavers which have an aura. This aura puts a stacking debuff on everyone reducing their haste and inflicting damage. But keep in mind that you can reset your stacks if you hide behind a pillar and line of sight the mob. The debuff is also dispellable so that's another way to get rid of your stacks. Few packs of these, some jumping tricks to avoid a double time reaver pool and you should be at the last boss. He's gonna keep casting a time sync dot on 3 players every 20 seconds. It does a ton of damage and it slows you down but that also means that you can dispel it with abilities like Blessing of Freedom, Tiger's Lust, Disengage, Thunderous Pulse etc and you should definitely do that as your healer can only dispel one of them and everybody else won't be able to keep up with the damage that the fight has. The time sync debuffs are usually followed by a wing buffet which is an AoE that knocks you back. So everybody needs to be topped off before that happens and the boss also has a frontal so make sure you're standing behind it. As you can see you have to keep dodging all the puddles on the ground until the boss casts rewind time. At this point you have 12 seconds to stay on top of those puddles to shrink them down and you also get a haste buff while doing so. During this the boss fills up his energy bar back up and then goes back to phase 1 which will continue with the same abilities draining his energy back to zero before the next rewind. After few iterations you should be able to kill the boss and complete the Udaman dungeon. Ladies and gentlemen welcome to the short guide for Holes of Infusion, one of the dungeons that we're going to be playing in M plus during season 4 of Dragonflight. We're going to go through the main trash and boss mechanics and keep in mind that the footage that you see is from the PTR so it is subject to change but it's probably going to be pretty close to what goes live on the servers. At the start you're going to be fighting trash with different combinations of several mobs, one of them is the Rafter Defender. Make sure to interrupt their demoralizing shout as it reduces the whole damage that the whole group does and definitely stay behind them as they have a frontal that applies a nasty bleed. The containment apparatuses are these orbs that are going to channel a beam to your target which you cannot interrupt but you can stun. Their target is random and later on you're going to be fighting few of those at the same time and if they target the same person they can take a lot of damage so be prepared to heal and use defensives. And make sure to save an interrupt for their expose cast which does heavy AoE damage to the whole party so you should prioritize interrupting that over the demoralizing shouts. You should also constantly watch your feet as the Gale Monsters are going to jump and do AoE damage in an area so simply dodge that. After you go through several packs of different sizes containing different combination of these mobs you're at the first boss watcher Iridius. He starts at 30% health and he has a frontal called Titanic Fist so stay behind him. He's also constantly going to do a channel called Static Surge which does heavy AoE damage to your whole party. So healers be ready with a cooldown for those 6 second windows. His next ability is called Power Overload, he's going to mark 2 people with debuffs sticking dots. That they have to run away from the party as when they expire they drop these circles on the ground that do damage so you don't want them on top of your team. And keep in mind that you can dispel these dots but you should be careful doing so because if you dispel them on top of the boss the puddles are also going to drop there. The boss also casts spark volley which are just these blue swirlies on the ground that you have to avoid. At 15% the boss transitions to phase 2 and 4 orbs are going to spawn around him. He is immune to damage and he's going to get a stacking damage increase buff. The only way to stop it is to dispel him by killing the orbs on top of him. Once they die they explode so move out of this area which is going to negate the shield that he has. But they're also going to do an interruptible cast that you can stun so keep an eye for that as well. After that you go back to phase 1 but now the boss is doing even more damage because of the debuff. Depending on how many applications he managed to get. And... 
Once he casts power overload and puts the debuffs on the people, once they expire, the circles that they leave on the ground are even larger radius now, so you have to run them further away from the group. Keep in mind that one of the nice changes right now is that once you drop the circle, it starts small and it expands, which means that you can outrun it and not take much damage from it, which was not the case in the previous iteration of this dungeon. Once you kill the boss, you have a choice of where to go left and right, but you're going to see basically the same trash mob in just different combinations. The shock troopers are going to try to cast elemental focus, which is going to make their primary attack smacking your tank a near we, so make sure to interrupt that and only heal your tank, instead of the whole party. And they usually have some zealots around them, invisible mobs that are going to stun the initial target, so make sure to let your tank run in first. You're also going to encounter small frogs called Curious Loglets. They fixate a random target and once they hit it they apply Stacking Poison debuff, which not only you have to heal through, but if it reaches 10 applications you instantly die. So make sure to CC and slow them down, especially if you don't have a Poison Dispel, and keep in mind that you're going to see those same little friends on the next boss. You're also going to see the Dazzling Dragonflights which have Dazzle, a frontal cast that not only does damage but it disorients as well so make sure to interrupt that. Just before the second boss you're going to fight two mini bosses, the first one is called Flamecore Amy, make sure to interrupt as many of the blasts that she cast as you can, but always make sure to save an interrupt for its cauterized cast which is a huge heal that you must interrupt. She's also going to root one of the players, putting a debuff on them that the healer can dispel. And they should because shortly after she does Molten Crush this big fire circle on the ground that you need to dodge. At the same time, the other mini boss is going to jump around, do AoE in an area and call small adds to help it. But nothing is scary there, just AoE the adds and keep dodging it. The second boss is the Gulping Goliath, a huge frog that is going to do overpowering croak, a huge roar that not only does AoE damage, but it also puts swirlies on the ground that you have to dodge, which transform into the curious sloglets that we saw earlier. Try to keep them close to the boss, not only because you want to AoE them down, but then he's also going to cast Gulp. Huge circle on the ground that is going to kill all the frogs inside it, but your tank also needs to soak it. If they don't, the boss enrages and that's obviously very bad. The soak puts 3 applications of that same poison debuff from the sloglets on your tank, so keep an eye for that, dispel it if you need to, and keep in mind that other players in your group can also get some of the debuffs before the little froglets die. The boss is also going to target a player with a belly slam, just move out of the blast area unless you want to get annihilated. And the last ability is called Toxic Effluvia, which is a 4 second channel doing heavy AoE damage to everybody in your group. The boss is going to keep juggling between all of these abilities until you eventually kill it. The trash that follows includes big proto dragons, which are going to cast Deep Chill. It does AoE damage to the whole party and leaves a dot on everyone, however it also slows you down, so if you have abilities like Blessing of Freedoms, you can remove it. Make sure to take advantage of those, especially on Fortified Weeks, and then dodge Oceanic Breath, which is a big frontal that the dragon casts. The dragons are going to have several different types of mobs around them. The Gale Singers are going to Thunder Strike this big circle around you that does AoE damage. It's not interruptible, but you can CC and stun it. The Ice Colors have a heal that you have to interrupt, and the Earth Shakers cast this big brown circle around them which does AoE damage and stuns, so make sure to avoid it. Few packs of these and you're at the third boss, Kai Jin. She has an aura that is constantly going to inflict damage to your party, so your healer must be healing at all times. And her first ability is called Frost Cyclone, which is a frontal targeted at a random player. Be very aware of your position, because not only you have to dodge it, but if it aims at one of the pillars around the room, it's going to explode, do heavy AoE damage and potentially kill you so make sure to always bait that to an open area away from the pillars. After that she's going to follow up with a hailstorm which is a 7 second cast which ends with a big explosion AoE damage, you can avoid that but just hiding behind one of the pillars. However, be very careful not to hide behind one of the cracked pillars, as they're not going to protect you but instead they're going to explode and do damage in an area designated now by a blue circle. So make sure to hide behind a healthy pillar which is not in one of the blast radiuses. 
after the hailstorm is over and hopefully you survive, the boss is going to perform her last ability, which is called Glacial Surge. Circles are going to spawn around the boss and do damage in an area slowly expanding so make sure to move out of those and collapse back on top of the boss to bait the next frontal which is going to follow shortly after and the fight is going to continue going through the sequence of abilities until you kill the boss. What follows is a gauntlet in this narrow corridor with waves coming from the left and the right side. Keep an eye on those because they do a lot of damage and knock you back. In the gauntlet itself you're going to see some of the mobs that you encountered so far in the dungeon including the proto dragons, ice colors, earth shakers etc. And small aqua ragers are going to keep coming until you complete the gauntlet reaching the far end. These mobs will try to enrage by interruptible casts but the more important cast to interrupt is tidal divergence. If that goes off the mob splits into several different smaller mobs which can easily overwhelm you so make sure you interrupt these. To finish the gauntlet you have to fight a mini boss in the end which is going to cast Inundate that does heavy AoE damage especially on fortified weeks so make sure you do not underestimate this mob. She's also going to cast Flash Flood, Big Circle on the ground, make sure you're not standing inside and make sure to interrupt the Aquas Barrier cast which puts an Absorb Shield on the boss which will make it die slower. That will bring you to the last boss, this big Elemental which is going to cast Tempest Fury, heavy AoE damage to the whole party. And he's going to follow it up with infused globals, he spawns circles on the ground that you need to dodge shortly after they become orbs and the orbs are going to move slightly around, make sure you don't get hit by those. He's also going to cast Squaw Buffet, knocking the tank back and following it up with Focus the Luch, which is just a tank buster, make sure you heal through that if your tank is not using their defensives. Once you reach 60% you get into phase 2 which sends you back into the gauntlet, there's no mobs right now there but you need to run back dodging the orbs and the waves that are going to be coming at you to stop them from spawning. Keep in mind that you can use the little pillars to hide from the waves and make sure you also dodge them because not only you take damage but you also get knocked back if you get hit. Back to the middle you're going to see 4 adds that are channeling on the boss who is immune right now and they're empowering him slowly. So you want to interrupt them as quickly as possible but keep in mind that once you interrupt them they start casting the inundate AoE. It's not interruptible, you can stun or CC it though, however if you interrupt all 4 adds at the same time you can easily get overwhelmed. However you can use CC as Hex, Polymorph, Paralyze etc on the adds that are casting to stop them from casting and then kill them one by one. Once you finish them off the boss emerges and the fight continues the same way as in phase 1. Ladies and gentlemen welcome to the Knockwood Offensive Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Season 4. Footage is from the PTR so changes are possible although unlikely. In the area around the first boss you have to clear all the ballistas and you find a bunch and variety of different mobs. The long bows are going to shoot arrows on the ground that you need to keep dodging. The plane stomper has a big AoE around him so melee beware and he also has a disrupting shout that you need to interrupt otherwise he does a bunch of AoE damage to your whole party. And the war spears are going to charge a ranged player and leave a very nasty stacking dot on them. If you're fighting two of these and they charge the same player, be prepared for a lot of pain as the bleed is going to be ticking for a lot. Some of the packs also have Horn Sounder with a Rally the Clan which is uninterruptible spell that you need to knock up CC or stun somehow otherwise all the other mobs are going to start doing more damage. And there's also Beast Masters with small birds, they'll try to rally the birds to fixate on a player and change them, this one is also uninterruptible so save a stun or CC. The first boss is going to summon an ad that is going to run across the battlefield and try to break the ballistra across it. You have to slow it down and kill it before it succeeds to do that. As at the same time the ballista is charging and once it's done somebody needs to run to it and click it so it fires to the boss. It does a little bit of damage to the boss and it stuns it preventing it from casting a huge AoE that is going to wipe your party. After that new ballistas start charging and another ad is going to come up and try to break it, so rinse and repeat that part. 
And while doing that, be aware that the boss has two more abilities that he's going to be casting frequently. Shards of Stone is just an AoE that hits everybody in your party. Be prepared to heal through it after it's done. And then there's a Tectonic Slam big circle around the boss. Just make sure you're not in sight. Quick tip here, you can fire the ballistas as soon as they're ready. You don't have to wait for the boss to start casting his AoE ability. The area around the second boss features several packs with totems, small mini bosses and few mobs around them. The named mobs are going to try to do AoE to your party using the totems so you can focus it down first and interrupt their storm bolts to reduce the amount of damage that your party is going to be taking. But always save an interrupt for the storm speaker's tempest channeling ability as it starts doing heavy AoE to your party and leaves a dot on everyone. So this is the highest priority interrupt in all of those pools. Apart from the totem pools, there's also a patrol around the boss, a big lizard and a few storm shields. The storm shields are going to shield themselves, burst through the shields quickly as if they expire without you damaging them, they're going to do AoE damage to your party. Interrupt all of the lizard's thunder strikes, make sure you're not in melee when he casts thunderclap and if he targets somebody with the chain lightning, run away from your party as you're going to take damage but if you're close to other players, it's going to jump to them and damage them as well. After you kill all the totems in the area, you summon the second boss, the Raging Tempest. One of his main abilities is Lightning Strike. Every player has a big circle around them, explodes in a little bit, so make sure you do not overlap these and be prepared to heal up after. And he'll also constantly spit out orbs around him that are going to start crawling towards him. You want to soak all of these because doing so gives you a stacking damage increase buff, caps at 10. And you'd rather have that instead of the boss when he goes into Electric Storm. 15 seconds channel that does heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party. It happens when the boss reaches 100 energy and you have to be prepared with all of your defensives and healing cooldowns to survive through this part. All of that keeps repeating, keep in mind that the Lightning Strike Blue Circles also kill orbs around them. In case you couldn't soak some of them and the boss also gets a buff cold surge of power that increases the damage that he does to the tank but this one is purgeable so if you have the capability to do so definitely take advantage. In the area before the third boss you have to kill several named mobs in order to summon him and always save an interrupt for their deadbolt volley as it does a lot of damage to your party. They're also going to shatter your soul reducing the damage that you do but you want to walk on top of your ghost in order to remove this effect. The dead speakers are going to channel an ability called Chant of the Dead. Big green circle on the ground that you need to move out from and also try to drag the mobs out of it as well as they will get above if they stay in sight. Interrupt the rotting winds from the Ohuna birds as they not only do AoE damage in front of them but they also reduce the healing that players in your party take. And any spare interrupts you can send at the dead bolts of the corruptors who are also going to cast bows around the area. They explode in a little bit, so just move out of them. You probably don't want to pull some beast colors in the area as they summon little dogs around them. You can AoE them down, but they do not count towards your trash percentage, so they're not very effective mobs to pull. Other pools will have Ryzen Warriors that mortal strike your tank and Ryzen Mystics that are going to cast Swift Wind. Simply interrupt those and keep going around the area until you kill all the named mobs. That allows you to summon the third boss, Terra and Maruk. Terra is not going to move around, instead she's firing quick shots which does single target damage to random players in your party. And then she's randomly going to jump to a new location. At the same time Maruk is going to be casting Frightful Roar, big purple circle on the ground, stay out of it unless you want to take a bunch of damage and get feared. He'll also cast Brutalize, just a tank buster that your tank needs to mitigate but nevertheless be prepared to heal them up. And then at 100% energy each boss does their main ability. Terra marks every player with a Gale Arrow, you wanna stack these before they expire. When they do a lot of damage and summon tornadoes coming out from each of the players. Stacking makes it easier to dodge them as they do a lot of damage and knock you back. And keep in mind that they'll start moving back in at some point so you have to dodge them on the way back as well. Shortly after Terra is also going to cast Repel which turns into an interruptible spell that pushes everybody back. While Maruk is casting his trademark ability, those big swirlies that come out of it towards the players, you need to dodge them and stay out of them as they explode in a short while. 
all of these mechanics will keep happening until you manage to kill the bosses that do share their help pool. After that you want to use the back door to the last boss area where you cannot fly but you can sneak in on the back of your dragon by landing on the top of the mountain just before you lose the ability to fly. Before the last boss you have to kill two mini bosses that engage in combat as soon as you pull the boss. Batak has a huge frontal while Balara has a charge so always try to stay behind them and dodge their frontals. Dodge the spear swirlies that they throw on the ground and interrupt the roar that Batak is going to try and cast. If he succeeds he fears everyone on top of doing damage. Trying to DPS them evenly is also advised as one of them enrages as soon as you kill the other. The last boss is Balakar Khan and he has 3 phases, at the start he's going to cast rendering strike on your tank that leaves a nasty bleed so make sure to heal through that. And be aware of your positioning when he is about to cast his main ability called Iron Spear. He marks the player, throws the spear at him which does a whole bunch of damage and then charges at their location. You can use that rock to prevent the boss from moving too far away but in any case make sure you're not in front of them when they do the charge. Their last ability is called Upheaval, it's a huge frontal that you need to dodge and also all the players are marked. With brown circles that do a bunch of damage make sure you do not overlap them. At 60% phase 2 starts the boss is now immune to damage and there is a storm raging with a lot of swirlies on the ground that you need to keep dodging, everybody is taking constant damage. There are 4 adds that you need to kill in order to transition to phase 3 and they'll keep casting storm bolts. They do a lot of single target damage so make sure you're interrupting and stunning the adds, even CCing them if you need to in order to survive this transition phase. All cooldowns, defensives, even bloodlust should be committed to this phase in order to reach the last one. If you succeed you transition into phase 3 which is very similar to phase 1 but the abilities of the boss are now enhanced. You have to keep dodging the boost while it's on the ground and the spear now not only does damage but it also sucks in all the players into the player's location. At least you can still use the rock to dodge the charge. The tank buster now leaves a debuff that you need to dispel, not only it's a dot but it increases the damage that the tank takes. And upheaval now leaves permanent puddles on the ground that remain there after the ability is done. The boss will keep cycling through all of these abilities and if you manage to survive them you successfully complete knockout offensive. Ladies and gentlemen welcome to the Asia Vault Season 4 Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide. Footage is from the PTR so changes might occur until it goes live but that's very unlikely. Here in the start we purposely walked on top of one of the whelps to awaken the mobs in the middle of the room. But we didn't know that the skips at the end of the dungeons are not allowed anymore so you probably want not to do that as you end up with a lot more percentage than 100 at the end of the dungeon. Other than that make sure to interrupt the mystic vapors from the lashers as they do AoE damage to your whole party. At the same time dodge the swirlies on the ground from the arcane tender trees. And also interrupt their erratic grow cast as it stuns somebody and does a bunch of damage to them. After a few packs you wanna jump down to the first boss room where you have a bunch more of the arcane trees. With few small saplings around them which explode upon dying so dodge all of that. And then you get to fight Laymore. He's going to spawn a bunch of sprouts around the room, don't get hit by the initial cast. And you have to get rid of all of them eventually. The first way to do that is to target them with the boss frontal that he casts on the tank. After he does a burst of damage to them so be ready to heal. And of course make sure you don't get hit by the frontal. And then the remaining sprouts you have to kill with the big circles that the boss puts around everybody in your party. Make sure you do not overlap them and you spread evenly around the room so you actually kill all the sprouts. After the big circles expire they not only kill the sprouts but they also do AoE damage to everybody in your party and you have to heal them back up quickly as the boss is going to cast consuming stomp. This does another burst of AoE damage which is increased for every spout that remained alive. You also probably noticed that every sprout that you killed summoned a sapling, collapsed those on top of the tank and keep in mind that they still explode upon dying so be careful not to get caught in the blast radius. The boss will cycle through these abilities in the same order until you eventually kill it. 
After the boss you go down a corridor and around big circles where you encounter several different mobs. The arcane elementals are going to cast Waking Bane, make sure to interrupt that as it puts a party member asleep and although it's dispellable it's better to interrupt it instead of having your healer dispel it. The room keepers are going to cast Condensed Frost which is just a tank buster, you can interrupt as many of these as you can but definitely save an interrupt for the icy bindings which does AoE damage and roots everybody at place which is very deadly combined with the unstable curator's forbidden knowledge, those big blue circles that you see on the ground definitely dodge these because they one shot. Any spare interrupts you can send into the curator's heavy tome which is a single target spell. You will also encounter some crystal fury elementals, make sure to purge their arcane fury if you can as that increases the damage that they do. And they also cast piercing shards which is a frontal that leaves a stacking dot on your target. Obviously dodge the frontal but also keep an eye on your tank because if you're fighting several of these at the same time they can get quite high stacks and take significant amounts of damage. The crystal thrashers are even bigger elementals that do an AoE damage around them in a big circle, melee beware. And on the rings you also find some arcane constructs that hit the tank pretty pretty hard so beware of those as well. Once you get off of the rings you fight some vault guards that do ice cutters, those are tank busters so beware of your tank dying especially on fortified weeks. And the same ability is cast by a mini boss which also has a spell frost breath frontal, make sure you're not standing in front of the mob. You have to kill it and everything around the circle so you clear the area to fight the second boss. And some of the packs are going to have those small arcane elementals which are going to cast AoE swirlies on the ground, simply dodge these. The second boss is Azure Blade, she's gonna summon adds that you need to interrupt and cleave down along with the boss. And then you have to be on your toes all the time because she has a big frontal orb which comes along with more blue swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. If you're melee also beware because she has a tank buster that also cleaves so you can get one shotted if you're not positioned correctly. After 40 seconds the boss jumps in the middle of the room becomes immune to damage and starts shooting out orbs that you need to dodge. On top of that there's even more blue swirlies on the ground that you also need to avoid and while you're dodging all of these you have to kill 4 adds that are surrounding and channeling on top of the boss to remove his immunity. Make sure that you're using defensives and healing cooldowns during this phase especially if you're away from your healer as the adds on the opposite ends of the room are quite far apart. After you DPS down the adds you go back to the first phase and everything is going to repeat over and over again but this time the boss has 50 seconds before he goes into the transmission phase again. After you kill the boss in season 1 there was a skip where you could run back and jump down from the edge to the next platform and skip a lot of trash but apparently this is fixed and now you die as soon as you go off the ledge. That means that you have to take the long route in the corridors after the second boss and you find some breakers there which are going to do bestial roar, huge AoE through your entire party. And they'll also mark a player and charge them doing a lot of single target damage although this one you can line of sight if you're positioned correctly and you're quick enough. You also fight a whole bunch of frogs that are very annoying because they jump out of melee and try to stomp players on landing. So you have to dodge that without stepping on the runes which explode if you walk on top of them. After a whole bunch of frogs and breakers you get to the third boss grey wing. Frost bombs will be frequently applied to everybody in your party, after 5 seconds you drop ice circles in the ground that you need to walk away from as they remain there permanently. After the bomb she targets a player with icy devastation, a beam that does a lot of single target damage but while it's active the player also pulsates damage so that person needs to move away from everybody else. And for the last ability the boss jumps off of the platform in the middle and starts 8 second cast which ends up with a huge AoE damage. In order to survive that you need to run in one of the domes that spawn on top of the 4 runes that you see around the platform. They reduce the damage of his ability by 50% but keep in mind that you're still gonna get hit pretty hard on tyrannical keys. These abilities keep repeating until you kill the boss and you jump down the platform to the last one. Umber's Co is a big dragon that's going to cast Dragon Strike on your tank, that's a tank buster that does initial damage and leaves a heavy dot on your tank that you can dispel so make sure you keep doing that throughout the fight. 
Crystalline Roar is yet another frontal, so make sure you're dodging that. And when the boss casts Arcane Eruption, few orbs are going to spawn around the room. They're going to start moving around slowly, so make sure you're dodging them and you're never standing on top. At 75, 50 and 25% the boss is going to summon Detonating Crystal that you have 20 seconds to kill. Otherwise it explodes and does heavy damage to your whole party and the crystal is summoned with a shield while the shield holds, the whole party is taking heavy damage. So that would be a good point to use defensives and healing cooldowns. The last ability is called Unleash Destruction 3 second cast that knocks everybody back and does AoE damage to the whole party. Make sure you don't get knocked back into one of the orbs. And all of that is going to keep happening until you kill the boss and finish the dungeon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Algatars Academy Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Season 4 in Dragonflight. Footage is from the PTR, so although unlikely, some changes are possible before this hits live servers. At the start of the dungeon, there's four different NPCs that you can talk to. Talking to one of them gives you 5% of one of your secondary stats. So make sure you do your research and don't forget to talk to them once the dungeon starts so you're not trolling and having 5% less stats from your teammates. If you go up and to the right, you're going to encounter some skitterflies which are going to charge people and do a bunch of damage to them. And it's very likely that you'll be pulling these on top of the vile lashers and the small lashers which are going to keep casting those big green swirlies on the ground. So you have to DPS them down, heal through all of this and tank it without getting hit while the skitterflies at the same time are getting stacking increased damage buff. So expect a lot of chaos until you clear this area in order to summon the first boss. The Overgrow Ancient has a tank buster that he's going to follow shortly with the Germination skill. He's going to spawn brown swirlies at the feet of the player which you need to dodge but keep close to the boss possibly as they turn into hungry lashers that are asleep right now. You can start cleaving those but beware of the next ability which is called Branch Out. Another big swirly that you need to dodge that summons another at which is a bigger tree. This one is going to try to cast healing touch, make sure to interrupt all of these and DPS it down quickly because right now everybody has a ticking dot on them and the only way to remove it is kill the ad and stay in the green circle that spawns once it dies. Once the boss reaches 100 energy he's going to cast burst forth. This does heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party and awakens all the hungry lashers that haven't been killed at this point. Obviously the tank needs to get aggro on all of them and every time they melee hit him they apply a stacking poison dot. So it's crucial to have a poison dispel in your party to get rid of the stacks once they become too high. Rinse, repeat, kill the boss and move on to the next. On one of the platforms you have to fight a mini boss that does a storm slash just a tank buster and then he's going to summon deadly winds. Make sure to move out from the swirly on the ground as quickly as possible as it's going to summon a tornado that's going to kill you. The mini boss also does a huge AoE circle that you can either line of sight behind one of the pillars or outrange if you are a caster. On the next platform you need to find a few packs of birds, make sure to dodge the gust which is a fronto and interrupt the call the flock of the alpha egos as it buffs all the mobs around it. After a few waves of birds, a circle and ball spawn on the platform, you need to get the balls into the circle and press your extra button in order to summon the boss. The boss arrives with a bunch of fire swirlies on the ground, make sure to dodge these so you don't die even before the fight started. And the boss is a big bird that leaves a nasty dot on your tank, so be prepared to heal through that. The boss's main ability is Deafening Screech which does AoE damage to everybody in your party and leaves a stacking debuff which increases the damage from subsequent casts. As you can see, the boss also has a frontal, so make sure you keep an eye for that at all times. Shortly after, a fire and a wind circle are going to spawn on the platform along with the balls that we saw in the beginning of the fight. Bringing three balls into one of the circles and pressing the extra action button is going to get rid of your deafening screech stacks but it's also going to remove the circle. So what you want to do is survive as many screeches as possible and once the damage becomes unbearable you want to throw some of the balls into one of the circles usually starting with the fire one. 
that briefly stuns the boss, it takes increased damage and then that fight continues with you having no deafening screech tags but now fire swirlies are going to keep spawning around the platform so you have to dodge those as well. The boss of course is going to continue casting deafening screech which is going to keep stacking on you and once the damage becomes unbearable again you can throw the boss into the wind circle. This is going to clear your stacks yet again but now there's going to be winds that are going to be blowing you back and forth on the platform and tornadoes that you have to dodge on top of the fire swirlies. Among all of these scales you should be able to kill the boss before the deafening screech stacks become unbearable for a third time. The trash that follows has a bunch of different mobs, the spellbound scepter is going to cast mystic blast, you cannot interrupt that but you can cc or stun it so make sure you have something available otherwise the whole party is going to take a lot of AoE damage. Interrupt the mana voids and the surges from the mana fiends as not only they do damage but they can also drain your healer's mana and the battle axes are going to put a bleed on your tank so be prepared to heal through that as well. You also have to find the arcane ravagers which are going to try and ambush somebody jumping on top of them and doing a lot of damage but you can line of sight that skill and the only ability that they have left and you have to worry about is the frontal that follows after that. Few packs of mobs like this and you summon Veximus which is the next boss. He's going to spawn orbs that start crawling towards the boss and if they reach him he's going to do AoE damage and get more energy so you actually want to soak them. However, keep in mind that they leave a debuff on you which is stacking and increases the damage from subsequent soaks. This debuff is 20 seconds long and it is dispellable but you can also let your tank soak a little bit more than everybody else. The other major ability is mana bombs, 3 players drop puddles on the ground and take a bunch of damage. They also take ticking damage once they're marked with those mana bombs before they drop them so be prepared to top them up. Especially if there's an overlap with Arcane Fissure which is an ability that the boss casts at 100 energy. It does another batch of heavy AoE damage and knocks everybody back following up with a bunch of blue swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. The nastiest parts of the fight are if the mana bombs overlap with the Arcane Fissure be ready to use defensives and healing cooldowns for those moments. The boss also has a frontal so make sure you're standing behind it and keep doing all of these mechanics until you eventually kill it. In order to reach the last boss you have to go back to the area where you killed the overgrown ancient and you're going to find some echo knights there. They will start spinning around in a whirlwind that you need to avoid but you can also use the stairs to dodge it. The invokers are going to cast arcane missiles, interrupt those as they do a lot of damage and do not interrupt the astro bomb. This marks a player with a blue circle that explodes and although they're going to take damage they also damage the mobs nearby so try to drop it on top of the trash. And if possible save a stun or CC for the restorers who are going to cast shields on nearby mobs but this one is not interruptible. The last boss is Echo of Dora Gossa and she has a brand new ability Unleash Energy which does a bunch of AoE damage and summons two arcane rifts. The rifts are occasionally going to spit out orbs that you need to dodge so be aware of that and stay away from them if possible. The boss is going to follow up with energy bomb, it marks a player who shortly after explodes so move away from others and you also get an overwhelming power stack. This slightly increases the damage that you do but if at any point you reach 3 stacks you drop another arcane portal on the ground making even more orbs to dodge. The boss is also randomly going to apply stacks to players every now and then and if you get hit by any of the orbs that come out of the rifts you're also getting a stack. Long story short if you are at 2 stacks and you know you're getting a third one try to drop the portal near the walls. Other than that the boss occasionally sucks everybody in, run out of the blessed radius circle after that and keep in mind that Ichi has a frontal so you have to be ready to dodge that at any point. The fight will slowly become more chaotic as there are going to be more arcane portals on the ground summoning more orbs. So try to stack those rifts close to each other and move the boss to an open area whenever possible. And if you manage to dodge everything you kill the boss and you complete the dungeon. Ladies and gentlemen welcome to the Brackenhide Hollow Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide 4 Season 4 in Dragonflight. Footage is from the PTR. At the start of the dungeon you're going to encounter a whole bunch of different mobs starting with the bone bolt hunters which are going to throw traps at the ground just avoid these and leave a nasty bleed on players with their bone bolts. 
The DK speakers are going to cast DK surges at players, just interrupt as many of these as you can and once they summon a totem make sure you spare an interrupt for their withering burst. This one is quite nasty as it not only leaves a debuff on you that does damage but it also reduces your stats. At the same time the mystics are gonna keep shooting earthen bolts at you and those hurt particularly bad on fortified weeks so make sure to interrupt as many of these as you can as well. The claw fighters are going to fixate a player and try to melee him to death so just slow them down and CC them in order to prevent that. The bone crushers are going to put a bleed on players and you have to heal them above 90% to remove it. Last but not least the big war scourge mobs are going to cast rage storm. That's an enrage effect that you can suit, they start spinning violently around so make sure you're not in melee and after that they're going to cast a spell that is going to fear your whole team so always save an interrupt for that. Your goal in the first area is to open 5 2 scar cages which you can only do outside of combat and once you do you're going to spawn the first boss. It's a trio of mobs that you have to fight and all of them have different abilities. Gash Toot is going to cast Gash Frenzy, he jumps around and leaves bleeds on several different players. These bleeds can be removed once the players are healed above 90% health. He's also going to cast Marked for Butchery, he jumps on a player, fixates them and does a bunch of damage over 4 seconds. So be prepared with healing and defensives. At the same time Rita Hacklore is going to cast Bladestorm. She starts spinning around and chases player around the boss room so make sure you do not get into the circle. And when she's not doing that she has a cleave so if you're melee make sure to always stand behind her. Always save an interrupt for the greater healing of the trick totem mob and then keep interrupting its earth bolts the rest of the time. All three bosses have trademarks abilities that they cast at the same time. Trick Totem summons a totem that hexes the healer and the DPS needs to burst it down as quickly as possible to free them so that they can dispel the blind on the tank that was casted by Gashtoot. The tank then needs to position themselves between themselves and the savage charge of Rita Harklow and her target which is a random player in your party and if you survive that overlap the rest of the fight continues as before. The next area has a whole bunch of mobs but probably the most dangerous one is the Rot Singer. It has an AoE cast that you need to interrupt and it's also going to summon a totem that's going to put that withering debuff on players that not only does damage but also reduces your stats. The debuff is a disease so if you don't have a disease dispel that's gonna make it a little bit harder. The smaller elder trees have a root that you need to interrupt and the big withered oak trees have a stomp which is a big circle on the ground that you need to dodge if you're in melee and a frontal that everybody else needs to dodge called necrotic breath. These mobs will also keep summoning small lashers, make sure to run those on your tank so he can easily get aggro on them. After a whole bunch of pulls with these mobs you're at the next boss tree mouth. He has a frontal so obviously dodge that. And he's also going to cast Decay Spray which is green swirlies on the ground that transform into slimes. AoE them down and also save an AoE CC for them as they'll try to cast spells at random players all at the same time and if somebody is unlucky they can get one shot at. The boss then casts Grasping Vines trying to pull everybody towards him into a big green circle. At the end he eats everybody inside that circle and there's always should be one player soaking in there unless you want the boss to enrage. Once they're eaten they take a bunch of damage, the boss has a shield that you have to burst through and then you go back to the first phase. Keep in mind that the player who has been consumed has a debuff that increases the damage from subsequent consumes. So after your tank gets a couple of debuffs somebody else needs to run in in order for him to reset his stacks. And a good target for that is somebody with an immunity. After you kill the boss you fight a mini boss that has a frontal called Sting Breath. It does a bunch of damage and it disorients the players that are caught inside of it. In its current version it's actually dodgeable but you have to be very very quick and also melee stay out of the circle once the boss starts to cast his whirlwind. After you kill it you want to skip almost every mob from it until the third boss as they're quite nasty and hard to deal with. I have a separate video on how to do that and the bear and the two birds you can actually pull on top of the boss as long as you keep interrupting the bird's screech. As for the boss called Gutshot he's going to summon traps on the ground these green swirlies. Make sure you don't walk on top of them as you're gonna take damage and get stunned. 
and every time at 100% energy he's going to call two hyenas that are going to join the fight. They are either going to try and jump on top of players, indicated by a brown swirly that you need to dodge, or the boss is going to mark a player and the hyenas are going to fixate them and start chasing them. You actually want to kite the hyenas into the green trap so they get stunned and trapped, and slowly cleave them down as long as they're not fixating you, while you keep interrupting the boss's master co, which makes the hyenas immune to the traps. The next area has a bunch of field colors which are going to keep casting DK search at players, interrupt as many of these as you can and save a stun or a knockup for their rotting surge which cast those green swirlies around the room. At the same time the rot hexers are going to put that disease on you the big green circle that stacks, does damage to you, reduces the damage that you do and it spreads to players nearby which are standing inside of that circle. Another very nasty piece of business to deal with if you don't have a disease dispel in your party. The area is also full of small mobs that you can just cleave down along with everything else. And after several pulls with different combinations of these mobs and some of the ones that we have already seen in previous parts of the dungeon, you should be at the last boss. The fight starts with a frontal casted on the tank that summons a choking cloud. Make sure to dodge the frontal and then stay away from the cloud which is going to start going in circles around the room as going in gives you a debuff called Withering Rot. It's a dot that stacks and also reduces the damage that you do. The boss will then summon a totem and the totem is always summoned at the opposite end of the room of where the boss is positioned. So keep that in mind and make sure you don't summon the totem inside of the cloud because you have 7 seconds to kill it as it's gonna be casting Rotting Burst. If that cast goes off then everybody in your party gets a stack of the Withering Wrath debuff that I mentioned earlier and you definitely want to prevent that from happening. The reason for that is the decaying strength that the boss casts at 100% energy. It does explosions at the player's locations so make sure you spread out and it consumes all the Withering Wrath debuffs but it also buffs the boss for each stack that was available. It also removes the cloud from the arena but shortly after she casts another frontal and summons another cloud, the fight then continues as before. The one thing that I didn't mention so far is that she has a tank buster called DK Strike, it does a bunch of damage to the tank and puts a healing absorb shield on them that you have to heal through. So basically you need to keep killing down the totems as quickly as possible, survive the DK and strength casts and keep going until the boss reaches 5% which is when the fight ends. Ladies and gentlemen welcome to the Neltara's Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Season 4, footage that you're going to see is from the PTR so small changes are possible before this goes to the live servers. Keep in mind that the all famous chains that we used in Season 1 in this dungeon are changed, they do not damage the mobs anymore. They are spread out throughout the dungeon and right now only one player can click them, they stun all the mobs around them and increase the damage they take by 50% for 5 seconds, but that's it. So use them as often as you can as they're going to help you, but do not expect them to kill full packs of mobs as that happened in the previous iteration of this dungeon. You already saw the wardens that put a nasty bleed on players, the other dangerous mob in that first area is the trauma mage. It will try to cast Molten Core if there are elementals around them, empowering them and if that happens you're probably going to wipe because they start doing a lot of damage. So keep interrupting that and heal through the single target channel spell if you don't have a CC or a stun for it. Also be careful with the plunderers which cast those big fire swirlies on the ground, simply avoid them. And that will quickly get you to the first boss called Magma Tusk. He's going to fixate a player with a lava spray, a frontal, make sure that that player is the only one being hit by that ability. And he'll also spawn fire swirlies on the ground, make sure to dodge. For his next ability blazing charge he chooses a direction and start charging until he hits something, make sure you're not on the way and dodge the lava waves that come out of him after the impact. His last ability is Volatile Mutation which does a bunch of AoE damage and leaves a dot on everybody in your party. Defensives and healing cooldowns should be at hand here but keep in mind that progressively the fight becomes harder as the boss gains stacks of damage, increasing the initial damage of the mutation, the duration of the dot after that and the amount of waves that spawn after the boss charges. 
so in short, the fight remains the same, but the later stages are going to be much harder. After you kill the boss, you run to the other wing where you're going to fight some hunters. They have a frontal cone on the ground that you need to dodge and they're going to jump on people and leave a nasty bleed, so be prepared to heal through that. They will also throw spears on the ground, brown swirlies that you need to avoid because they will stun you and do a lot of damage if they hit you. If you happen to pull some bone tenders, make sure to interrupt their mending clay, which is a heal. And this area also features a mini boss that does a big fiery circle of damage around it that you can interrupt and a bunch of fire swirlies that you can dodge. He's not that scary at all, so it's very easy to put on top of other mobs. The next boss is Chargat, he has a frontal that summons a magma wave that you need to dodge. And similar to the hunters before that, he's going to jump at a player using his dragon strike and leave a nasty bleed on them that you simply have to heal through unless you have another way to get rid of it. His main ability is called Grounding Spear, he targets the 3 DPS in your party with spears that they need to run out as they drop fire puddles on the ground and take a bunch of damage. And after that they remain connected to those spears with a chain. At the same time the boss casts fiery focus and enrages starting hitting your tank and spitting more swirlies on the ground. And in order to calm him down you have to run him through all three chains that are connecting the DPS players to the spears. That stuns the boss, he takes increased damage for a few seconds and then everything starts over. Important note to make here is that you do not have to break all the chains at the same time as every chain broken leaves a 4 second debuff dot on every player in your party and this debuff is stacking. So ideally you want to stagger the chain breaks and wait 4 seconds in between so your healer can keep up, especially on high tyrannical keys. After that boss you see several new mobs in the trash, the lava flares are small elementals that are going to keep casting melt at players, interrupt as many of these as you can. But definitely save an interrupt for mode of combustion if there is an iron torch in the pool, as it does a lot of damage to the target and leaves a nasty debuff that you can dispel. Those mobs also have a frontal that you need to dodge. While the bone spitters around them are going to throw dragon axes at players which leave a very nasty bleed that stacks and the only way to stop it is by stunning or CCing as it's not interruptible. There's also another mini boss here but this one you can skip by simply walking close to the wall. If you do pull it keep in mind that it does a lot of AoE damage and fiery circles that you need to spread with and heal through. And just before the next boss you have to fight some lava bearers who throw lava on the ground, simply dodge that. And beware of the blacksmiths who do AoE damage to your whole party and leave a nasty bleed on your tank. Forge Master Gorek is the third boss, he's occasionally going to jump into the middle, smack his anvil and do pulsing damage to everybody at your party. Be ready to heal through that and after that he's going to throw his shield at a target that bounces to two additional players. Each player hit takes a bunch of damage and summons swirlies on the ground that you need to avoid. After that he knocks back the tank, they need to run away quickly as he's going to jump after them and smash the ground. This is followed by a forge storm, a bunch of swirlies on the ground that you still need to dodge and then everything repeats with the boss jumping back in the anvil in the middle, doing the AoE and going through the sequence of actions until you eventually kill it. Two quick tips here, when he throws his shield you can try to position in a straight line which is going to make the dodging of the follow up swirlies much easier and also the tank can bait and get knocked back into the same spot on the ground every time to maximize the space that you have around the room. After the boss you run back down to the middle of the dungeon and you fight some wardens who have a frontal, make sure to dodge that. While the big blazewing birds are going to flap their wings, do a lot of AoE damage to everybody in your party and knock everybody back. On the way to the last boss you're also going to see some lava monsters interrupt as many of their bolts as you can. And once they shield themselves try to burst through the shield as quickly as possible so you can interrupt molten army. While they're casting this ability they'll keep summoning small mobs that can easily overwhelm you if you don't interrupt it quick enough. The last boss Warlord Sarga has a frontal so be ready to dodge that at all times. And he's going to follow it up with Molten Gulp which is a debuff that you cannot dispel, a dot that does a lot of damage to the targeted player so the healer should be ready to heal that up. He also summons a gnat that fixates a player after leaving a fiery puddle on the ground, kited around possibly through the boss so you can cleave it down quickly. 
The boss also has a transmission phase that you need to prepare for by picking special abilities from the gold piles on the ground. Once you pick an ability you get a curse on you that lasts for 30 seconds which could be problematic if you don't have a curse dispel in your party. And once the boss casts magma shield you need to use 3 of these abilities on the shield to burst it down immediately. While the shield is active everybody is taking AoE damage and there is fire swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. But once you break it the boss is stunned and takes extra damage for a few seconds. As for the abilities that you pick up they vary, some of them are melee, some of them are range, some of them are target something on the ground and throw it. And I will link a weak aura in the description of this video which puts a notice on your screen to know which one you picked up. After you go through several phases like this one the boss dies and the dungeon is complete.